Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Share with the European Union, a vlog where we talk to senior EU personnel, implementing partners, and noteworthy people to discuss important issues facing Somalia. My name is Hassan Gedi Santur, along with my co-host, Kalsan Abdi. July 1st marks Somalia's 61st anniversary since gaining independence. The European Union congratulates the people of Somalia on this momentous anniversary. To commemorate this joyous occasion and to help us better understand what this day means to the Somali people, especially the youth, we are joined with Ambassador of the Delegation of the European Union to Somalia, Nicolas Balanga. We have Bedra Yusuf, a Somali-based researcher, entrepreneur, and director of Ruxan, a female-led social enterprise providing evidence-based strategic analysis consulting services here in Somalia and Mahad Wasuge, lecturer, researcher, and executive director of Somali Public Agenda. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shah with the European Union. I will now turn it over to Ambassador Balanga for a brief uh, opening remarks. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you, Carlson. Uh, thank you, Hassan. Uh, welcome, uh, Badra and Mahad. This uh, sad uh, is intended just to open spaces for uh, thoughts. It is a location to stop uh, from our busy present and start thinking beyond the, pres the present and start thinking about the future. And what can we do best for the uh, Somali society and for its citizens? So I'm very happy that we are uh, celebrating uh, the Independence Day uh, using ideas and uh, exchanging among ourselves about how we can serve the Somali society best. So, welcome again, and uh, very happy to be part of it. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, this is a question for everyone. What does Somali Independence Day mean to you? And we can start with Bedra. Welcome. Um, and thank you, Hassan and Kasson, for having me. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate everyone to you, the Somali community and the young generation on this important day. Um, for me, it means hope. Um, if you look back at the, the future and what um, and pe our, our people who um, and have paved the way for the younger generation have done for this country, we will realize that the young people have now, you know, um, better access to education, to technology, and I believe that they can overcome all the challenges that we have now in this country. So I would say to the younger generation uh, in Somalia now, um, we should see this day as a day of hope, a day, a day that also unites all of us together, no matter where we are, and that um, we all of us work together that and whatever gains that and we have met in the in this country the past 10 years that we work together in accomplishing um, more for this society making sure that um, you know we we also learn what happened in the past not only during the colony but also during the civil war we stand against everything that and has to do about social inequality and that also the younger generation feel that this day is not only a day that we should come out and celebrate we should see it as a day that reminds us of what happened before um, during the colony but also during the civil war and that we stand together and make our leaders accountable but also show accountability throughout you know and the year not only that we come out this day for celebration so happy happy independence day to everyone anything you'd like to add ambassador to what yes yeah. no I, I i think what father uh, said is uh, very important and i i cannot uh, 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 other than subscribe, what she said, uh, uh, we should. Uh, we said that uh, today. I mean, uh, we should use this kind of uh, celebration to to have uh, to uh, uh, open our eyes. I mean, have a longer perspective. Uh, I, I am defending uh, whenever I have the opportunity. I defend how the Somali society has changed for the last four or five years, and it has been a tremendous, a tremendous jump ahead. And, uh, and uh, uh, even with my limited possibility to uh, go around Mogadishu, I can see the changes. I have seen myself the changes for the last two or three years. The only thing that has not changed in Somalia is politics, unfortunately. So I think the, uh, the young people, the strength of the young people, the resilience of the young people, the creativity of the young people is changing the country. 
and we should try also to make politics to catch up with these changes. I think this is the, the, the bigger issue. And about the young people, uh, despite what Badra said about the importance of, uh, I mean, how now the interconnected society, the interconnected young generation are, uh, behaves as any other young generation in the world, I still have a, a, a thought to say about education. We need to do an effort to make sure that all uh, Somali children could go to a school. I still see some faces when I look at faces in the streets or uh, during, uh, during uh, one of my tours or visits, faces that clearly belong to people that have never gone to a school. That the only possibility to socialize has been a coffee shop or a militia or, or, or the army or a weapon. So we need to change that dynamic. We cannot forget that and try all of us to work with at least a basic education for all the children in Somalia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, Mahat, uh, did you hear Carlson's uh, question uh, before we lost you? Uh, we asked everyone to go around and talk about what independence they mean means to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Hassan. Um, uh, it's really a very important historical event for us. Uh, we all know how uh, the, uh, the Somalis fought for independence. It, it did not come easily. And uh, before that, there were uh, uh, colonial legacies that Somalia uh, went through. There were uh, many problems, challenges, international uh, actors and, uh, and also Western countries uh, uh, having a big impact on the lives of many Somalis. And there was this uh, cause to uh, get independence and uh, self-determination of the Somali people. And uh, it was uh, a, a cause that everybody, uh, every, every Somali was uh, fighting for, was, was supporting. And uh, it gave us the opportunity to, uh, uh, that Somalis can actually lead the Somali people and the Somali cause. And it's an opportunity to reflect what went wrong. It's at least one year ago when we took the independence. And also it was the union of the uh, British protectorate and the Italian trusteeship administrations. So it's an uh, opportunity to, to reflect what went wrong and what we can do to uh, make Somalia a better place. So that is uh, what, what it means for me. Uh, in, in this uh, uh, this commemoration of the independence of Somalia. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the second question is also for everyone. Uh, in your own opinion, what are the most pressing issues facing young people in Somalia today? And perhaps we can start with uh, with you, Mahad. Well. Uh... Go ahead, I, 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 don't, I don't know. It is, it is not an easy question because uh, I think Somalia has a lot of pressing uh, questions. And uh, just to prioritize them, it is not an easy one. I will say, uh, coming back to the present, to this mode, uh, I will say that uh, the current good spirit that the leaders have in order to uh, uh, organize elections as soon as possible this is the most pressing issue at this moment. Because I think uh, 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 the Somali administration, but also the international community, we need election to have a stable administration in place and being able to plan for the next three or four years. And as we did in two, from 2017 to 2020, to have two or three years really of stability to uh, move forward and progress in all the uh, uh, you know, in the different fields that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, that are the where uh, the main challenges are for Somalia, in terms of politics, it means constitution, uh, agreements, federalism, in terms of defense, I mean the fight against Al Shabaab, in terms of development, we have mentioned education, but others like infrastructure, health, others are important. So 
I will say uh, as immediate challenge, let's move towards election. Let's have, uh, let's uh, uh, contribute for a peaceful handover with a new administration and let's plan for the next two or three years to consolidate the challenge, the, uh, all what Somalia obtained for the last year and continue this path toward prosperity and peace. Okay. Latra, maybe you can, uh, you can tell us. Um, and thank you. I, I would definitely agree with the ambassador that the first and the most important thing is political instability. And I also do believe that um, we shouldn't be also forgetting about all the social issues, including and the challenges that the COVID-19 brought, not only the health-wise, but also the economic-wise as well. We, also have, we have to keep in mind, um, we have to also closely monitor what's happening now in the markets, what our in, uh, micro level and small entrepreneurs who are sitting in the markets are, are facing. And, 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 and on top of that, I would say also, um, you know, education and health are um, the two most important things that I haven't really seen. I have seen many people talking about politics, but I haven't really seen a lot of discussions on, on that's happening on the education and the, this country, and that there is a need for an immediate attention on not only having access to education, but also making sure that is there is access to quality education and that the education system in this country is also regulated. I feel like that is as important as the political situation in this country is, and also the health sector as well. So I would say, um, and I, I would really say that there's three, four main issues, the politics, the, the and economic side of it, especially focusing on um, and the impact that the COVID-19 had in our markets and also on education and, and health. Thank you. And uh, Matt, would you like to add anything to what Badr said? Yeah, thanks, Hassan. Uh, I think I, I agree very much with uh, Bedra and, and the ambassador on the pressing priorities. I would add that uh, I engage most of the time Somali youth who have been living and, and making, trying to do the change in, in, in Somalia. And uh, what I think is a priority for the youth, for instance, is getting opportunities, employment opportunities, as well as education opportunities, and also uh, opportunities to express their feeling platforms that they can discuss and, and be part of the, uh, of the discussions that are ongoing in, in the country. Uh, but can you tell us, as a female entrepreneur yourself, what are some of the obstacles and opportunities for Somali women in uh, breaking through the you know, business and, and, talk, and taking on uh, more of a leadership role? In business. Thank you. I think I'll, I'll speak from the heart. Um, um, th there are many challenges that women face. Um, I would start with the uh, structural barriers that women face, but also um, and uh, the social beliefs as well. That um, and uh, we talk a lot about giving women access to leadership positions, but for me, I believe that women have been there all along, starting from um, the independence time throughout um, and uh, the, the government time, the civil war time, and they were playing a key role, not only um, in, in um, providing or um, working in the survival of their family members, but also making sure that um, you know, in, uh, uh, um, in the 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 the, the political efforts in this country materialize. So I would say, first of all, we need to acknowledge that women are there. They are born leaders. They are leaders, and the the, the most important thing for me is to make sure that and uh, we look at all the leadership positions, starting from grassroots level to the top level. Most of the times we end up looking at the, at the top level and we forget about the grassroots level. We have to look at um, the, the, the village structures, the community structures, the district structures, the state structures, and all the way to top level government. We also have to look at the, the, the private sector as well. They, they, they also have you know, structures in place. We have the Chamber of Commerce. We have other institutions that are led by the private sector. We have to challenge all of them that 
we need to have women in all the, the, the leadership positions. And, and not only because, you know, we are looking for quota only, but because you know, women are capable, they are educated, they can lead. And I think, um, and uh, we, we have seen many women in, in the different platforms. It's just that, um, look at now the Independence Day, we are celebrating, but do we have um, a list of women heroes that we are celebrating? So for me, the, the most important thing is that we have to acknowledge that, that there are women role models in this country who have been part of all the struggles. Once we acknowledge that, I think it starts from there and we, then we can push all the different institutions. And I would say um, both the public and private institutions are equally important. We shouldn't really look into only the, the um, public institutions and, and push for um, women's representation. We have to discuss about you know, and, uh, access to employment opportunities for women in all institutions, both the public and private institutions, and you know, move and, and slowly to to um, in in all the different the different sectors. So I would say, um, and 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 really, we have to we have to and first of all start acknowledging our women heroes and 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 mentioning their names during these important days. Thank you. Uh, we lost uh, Mahat uh, for a second, but we, we have him back now. And Mahat, I just wanted to ask you a question that is sort of a continuation of where we left off the last time before we left you. Um, as a researcher, you speak to young people all the time. What issues do they say they would like to see the upcoming government after the elections tackle? Uh, can you give us one or two really concrete issues that they, uh, they, they tell you they want tackle? Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. I think there are priorities uh, for the youth. Um, uh, I think different segments of society have different uh, priorities, but the main priority for the Somali youth that I speak to very often is opportunities. As you know, the, uh, the unemployment rate in Somalia is quite staggering, and uh, the Somali youth uh, lack opportunities, uh, the government, which was supposed to be the, uh, the entity that could hire the many uh, thousands or, or of, of, of youth or, or people, uh, actually have a, a fewer or about 5,000 civil servants. And it's not a, an employer that can actually give opportunities, employment opportunities to many people, to many youth. and. Uh, what I often hear from the youth is uh, that they lack opportunities and they would like to uh, get uh, employment and make living for, for their families and for themselves. The next question is for Ambassador Barlanga and also very similar to Mahat's question. Uh, the international community, especially the European Union, has played a significant role in Somalia's peace building and reconstruction. What issues do you think the international community should prioritize in the coming years? Well, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I talked before about the, the three Ds, you know, the three uh, basic uh, lines uh, of action uh, that uh, the international community, or in particular the European Union, we have in Somalia, which are uh, diplomacy, means political dialogue, it means consolidation of institutions and uh, stability. The second D is defense, uh, is the rebuilding of the national army, the reform of the police, and trying to fight uh, and to be effective in the fight against Al Shabaab. And the third is the third D is development, uh, and we mentioned before. Uh, uh, health, education, infrastructure, and others. But uh, uh, in terms of, uh, I would like to, to highlight one idea that I don't think it has been uh, uh, sufficiently highlighted before in this uh, debate. It is the uh, entrepreneurial character of the Somali society. I mean, the government uh, or the institution or the administration should provide stability and should be able to uh, build institutions able to represent the wish and the, uh, uh, and, the, and, and the challenges for the society. But the society itself, the Somali society has an enormous strength in terms of uh, rebuilding itself, of uh, 
of creating jobs and uh, creating businesses and, and, and creating wealth. So uh, I, 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 uh, we have seen in some countries in Europe and also in other parts of the world that a society without this entrepreneurial character uh, look to the institution, look to the to the administration for jobs and, and wealth. And here you have you have all uh, you have this uh, asset. And please, you need to maximize this asset. Young people need to be creative. Uh, uh, Middle-aged people need to continue creating enterprises, businesses, and jobs. And the only thing we should require the administration is be effective in terms of representation, stability. And and uh, and, uh, and creation the condition, uh, the the uh, the legal security, the legal condition for the businesses to continue to flourish. Uh, I am very happy to be surrounded by young people, young uh, entrepreneurs, in particular women, that would like to uh, uh, to walk their own path without too much interference coming from the administration. And, and this is the Somali way, in my opinion, and this is something that you should preserve. Um, thank you very much, Ambassador. The, uh, the sixth question is also for you. Uh, as you know, we have an election coming in Somalia soon. Uh, what is the role the European Union is playing to ensure that the upcoming election is fair, free, and inclusive? Well, that's that's a tricky question, huh? and we can play with the words. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, unfortunately, let's be clear. I think we should not talk too much about free and fair election for the next election. I think we should all recognize the leaders, but also part of the international community that we have failed. In 2017, in 2018, there were engagements, commitments to open the participation, the election for the participation of the people. And this will not be the case in the next election. So in some way we have failed. Uh, what we need to do now, uh, what we should encourage from the international community to the leaders is to reach agreements that they have done in the 20, on the 27th of May and, and, and uh, honor these agreements and move towards election, toward peaceful election. I think this is the objective we can act to election, peaceful election as soon as possible and ensure a smooth transition between administrations. If we manage to do that, we will have again time to probably prepare better for the next election. But uh, I will not insist too much about free and fair, but just about election, peaceful election, and a smooth transition between administrations. Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent. Uh, I think uh, that's a, a very a realistic um, uh, assessment of where we are at the moment. So thank you, Ambassador, for your um, very frank assessment. Um, I, I wanted to actually move on to another question. Uh, this one is for all of you, and uh, uh, please feel free to jump in. Uh, I just wanted to ask, you know, looking forward, of course, as you guys have all touched on the fact that we are, we've been through a lot in the last 60 years, um, some years great, some years not so great, uh, but we, we have uh, before us a really great opportunity to, to build on the gains that have been made in the last, um, you know, uh, you know, 10, 15 years or so. So I was wondering if you guys could just sort of put on your, your you know, future, being able to see into the future, and if you can just sort of uh, talk briefly about what would you like to see, what, what are your hopes and aspirations, uh, especially when it comes to uh, Somali youth that you'd like to see in the, in the coming future, in the coming years. Batra, you want to take that first? Yes, maybe I can start. And uh, for me, like I've said before, I see a hopeful future. And I've lived in this country all my life. And when I see young people celebrating with their flags all over, I see that there is a, a huge change and huge gains for Somali community. 10 or 15 years before, when we were, we were walking in the streets, going to school and college, we have not seen that. But still, um, and uh, even with that, there is a huge gap between the government and the community. And I think we need to bridge that gap, bring them together so that also the community, especially the younger generation, feel that what 
government means to them and that they also feel that it is their responsibility to make the government accountable to participate all the discussions that are happening all the policy decisions that the government is is taking and that they should feel that it's not about the future it's about the present if they are not part of um, all the efforts all the you know um, discussions all the decisions that are taken now and today I don't I don't see um you know the hopeful future that I am dreaming now so I would say um and the, the, it is up to the younger generation to decide that they play a key role um in what's happening in this country and that to make the leaders accountable that they push for um and like the ambassador said we might not be having a free and fair election but we need to have an election and we need to have a political stability if we don't have political stability um, we have lived all our life in survival in 30 years after people are hopeful. And I think I don't think we can continue and living in a situation where we have fears about not only security, but also the political stability. So I think I, I do believe that the leaders of this country have really are, are in a position to, you know, um, and make sure that they don't only think about you know themselves, but also the future of this young generation and that they make sure that whatever um, decisions that they are taking is something that will help these young people who are in the streets, women who are in the streets and, and who are, you know, every day going to work every day going to to the markets to survive that these all these people are looking up to them and 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 are and, you know expecting them to make decisions that and will bring peace to this country but also will make sure that um, there is prosperity in the future for the younger generation and for all the somalis in in this country and also outside well thank you so much uh uh, but uh, for those very wise words, uh, Mahat. Uh, so yeah, finally, I would like to turn to Ambassador and just ask you uh, if you wanted to add anything to what Abra said, last comments, observations about the future of uh, Somali youth uh, in the coming years. Well, I would like to uh, to insist in something that Father said. I have a lot of uh, confidence. The European Union has a lot of confidence on the new generation, on the young generation. Uh, we really believe that uh, the young generation are the, 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 the real alternative to this survival strategy in which most of the society still live. So uh, we, uh, I, I would request this young generation to work in two directions. One direction is to continue to be creative, to continue to be dynamic, active, connected, and try to act as, as normal citizens in a normal society. So this is more to the external world. And also, I would also like to request the young generation to look inward and to create initiatives that uh, integrate, that make a more inclusive society, that don't leave people behind. Uh, more and more, we can see a difference between those young people living in towns and those young people living in rural areas. I mean, we need policies that integrate them. And I have a lot of confidence on young people uh, uh, setting up and developing policies, strategies, and initiatives that integrate also the people living in rural areas. Thank you very much. We have been speaking with Ambassador Nicholas Barlanga, Bedra Yusuf, and Mahad Wasuge. We have reached them in Mogadishu, Somalia. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Shah with the European Union. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and happy Independence Day. And I uh, hope you guys all find a wonderful and, and safe way to celebrate this very momentous occasion. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Mahat. Thank you, Ambassador and Hassan. <laughs>